Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on OpenMP implementation in Fortran and in this tutorial, I'll be explaining to you guys about three concepts. A race condition, parallel block and critical block. For that, I just uh, I'm just taking the previous example. Okay, we're going to use this hello world program to explain what these conditions are clearly. Okay, first thing what you'll we'll notice that we look at the we we'll look at this parallel block first. Okay, now when you run this command, when you run this program, let's say it says that uh, displays hello world number of threads used is four, and it says hello world from thread zero to three. Okay, this thread zero is actually the master thread. Okay, all the other threads are auxiliary threads. Okay, thread zero does the overall option and it runs the program from top to bottom. Whereas other threads, they just come, come they just uh, offering assistance wherever the parallel blocks, wherever the parallel blocks come into picture. Now, what does this parallel block do? In simple terms, what parallel block does is that it takes all the statements lying in between the in, inside the block and makes sure that each thread executes them once. Okay, when these when these threads execute them, when these threads execute them, individually speaking, the threads will follow the serial order. Threads will follow the serial order, but while taking turns, these threads uh, these threads might uh, these threads will be competing with each other for competing with each other for you know accessing the memory, accessing the output console and stuff, accessing memory and accessing the output console and stuff. Okay. So what happens is that when you when you have multiple instructions between parallel block, parallel block, what happens is that some threads might uh, take might take up uh, might dominate and they might finish all the instructions in one go and go away, or else uh, or else two threads or two or three thre thre threads might have a tough tug of war and they'll be completing one a few statements few statements before one one of them might be completing a few statements before uh, before which uh, before it completes others some other would have uh, raised in uh, took took the priority and it could have completed two more two, uh, some more statements and stuff so there could be a tug of war before finishing so what have essentially happening is happens is that when you put a parallel block like this okay all the thread all the threads will execute these statements definitely once before the before the b parallel block ends no question about it but during the process the threads will be actually competing with each other and that's where the one major devil of uh, parallel programming comes in and that's problem is that that is actually what you call as race condition now what race condition means is as follows to go show you guys to show you guys visually what race condition is let me just comment out this uh, critical block and run this program you see what happens instead of the pre in, in unlike the previous cases wherein the you have a hello world from thread all from all the threads here it says hello world from thread two three two two here it says hello world from thread two two all that all the while so if I run this again you get all the orders except the normal uh, except except from all the threads now this is not what it looks like actually all the threads are working fine but what happens here is that the results we are getting faulty fancy faulty results like this. It's because uh, this is because of race condition. Okay, the program is working fine, but because of the faulty conditioning inside, okay, uh, we are getting messed up results like this. And this is actually called because of race condition that's happening to this variable thread num. So what is race condition anyway? Well, race condition is is just this. Is this? Threads, uh, threads are comp threads will will be competing with each other in the parallel regimes, parallel blocks. Okay, to finish the to f uh, competing with each other to finish that execution. Okay, so during the process, what happens is that they might override the memory or memory of memory or the me override the values of the variables. And make thereby make thereby making it uh, messing up or screwing up the value for other threads. For example, in this program. That there are two instructions. This instruction in, the, in this program, there are two instructions in this parallel block. One for getting the thread num, other for getting the uh, printing the thread number. Okay. Now I one is actually for getting the thread number, and I two is getting printing the thread number. Okay. Now since we are using four threads, let's assume that the thread order is zero, three, one, two, which is perfectly plausible, which can happen. Okay. Now if I do this, if I want do one random simulation without the critical block. Without the critical block, one random simulation can come up like this. Okay, 
what i'm saying uh, okay Do, when the threads are competing with each other to finish the finish the program finish the parallel block what happens what happens here is that each thread will definitely go go, go serially they'll complete thread instruction 1 and instruction 2 but uh, they may not uh, pre- they may not uh, but they might be for having a tug of war between the th- the threads might be ca- finishing a ca- tug of war have within themselves as a consequence uh, you cannot say like okay, if thread if instruction one if instruction one got finished with thread in uh, in one instance if instruction one got finished by one of the threads let's say thread 0 finish instruction one you cannot say for sure whether by the next instruction the instruction 2 would be completed by inst- thread 0 or instruction one would be com- would have been completed by some other thread okay so let's do this uh, simulation experiment okay with our critical block at time t equals 1 let's say instruction 1 gets done by thread 0 okay then thread num value will be set to 0 fair enough now in the next time step let's assume that thread 3 raise budged in and finish instruction 1 instead of allowing thread 1 to finish instruction 2 uh, instruction 3 budged in and finished instruction 1 and when that happens the value of thread num will be set to 3 in earlier it was set to 0 now it's set to 3 okay thereby it messed up the value of thread num now if thread 2 uh, if the, i mean if thread 0 got to instruct uh, where to do the instruction 2 uh, in time step t equals 3 what will happen is that thread num will be thread num is 3 so it's print if it prints it's going to print 3 although the statement that prints this uh, although the the statement gets printed by thread 0 is going to print print it's going to print 3 thread number as 3 because because thread 3 messed up the value of thread 0 by messed up the value of thread 0 so it's going to print wrongly similarly as we go along if you if you assume that on steps 4 and 5 thread 2 and thread 1 uh, in, in, uh, executes the instruction 1 and uh, so thread num gets changed to 211 in the process uh, then we still have instruction 2 to be done by the threads 1 2 and 3 so let's say they, they execute them in the subsequently when all these three statements get executed we'll going to get print 1 3 times we're going to get 1 3 times so as a consequence what happens here is that because uh, threads were competing with each other they they in this case they deliberately they not deliberately or accidentally they messed up the thread order they messed up the thread order not messed up so they messed up the values of uh thread num in this process by ra- this is called as race condition okay now one way to avoid this is by using omp critical block and what does this critical block does is as follows in a parallel re- in a parallel uh, regime like this what critical block does is that it, it regulates the threads to uh, obey respect each other respect each other and uh, let them do the job one after the other okay what th- so since the thread order is 0 3 1 and 2 okay if you have a, if you if you run the simulation where with this order with a critical block let's say what will happen is that thread uh, thread 0 Well, we will finish the uh, instruction 1 in time first time step and in second time step it will uh, take a second time step it will be allowed to in- finish instruction 2 okay in third time step since there aren't any more instructions that by instruction 0 i mean thread 0 thread 0 will go away and the next thread which got uh, which got the priority which got the which was which was available will come and do instruction 1 instruction 2 leave away next thread comes in does the job and goes away so here here the instructions the all the set of instruction set is complete by each thread before the other thread comes in and does its job thereby uh, threads are not and uh, threads are not they taking turns and they are not budging in and disturbing uh, disturbing other threads function functioning okay so it kind of makes the threads run serially inside a, a parallel block the critical block and that's what critical block is used for it uh, makes sure that you, uh, you make sure that certain instructions are run one thread at a time okay one thread at a time okay inside a parallel block okay by adding critical block now here deliberately by adding the uh, adding the critical block deliberately the race condition has been avoided although the although the values are being changed in the subs- in, in between times of 2 and 3 4 and 5 6 and 7 okay since there aren't any more 
uh, actions uh, instructions available to be done by the previous threads so this is fine you are avoiding the uh, you're avoiding it and there isn't there isn't any problem okay that's what you call this is the thing about a uh, critical block and that's about this parallel block and this is one of this is one of the ways where you can avoid race condition well this is actually a workaround to avoid race condition these kind of cases there are other workarounds to avoid uh, race conditions in the future we'll work we'll look at that one after the other now with that being said now with that being said the final thing i like to tell you guys today is that uh, a little bit experiment with the number number of threads now in my system i can go up to eight threads as you saw in my previous video i have eight threads in my system so i can go up to eight threads so if i run this i can get up to eight threads without any difficulty no question what if i just i just am uh, not happy with myself and i push to something like 16 do you think this do you think this will throw an error well to my surprise it won't it won't throw an error now if uh, now you might ask me if there are just eight threads in your system how wha wha what happened how come you get uh, generated you get more uh, more results from here it's because it's because these are not actually threads these are not actually separate threads these are actually the same threads working on the working address different alias okay meaning there is eight threads in my system the, the remaining eight threads that with that that get generated over here are actually the old threads are actually the old threads with the num with a new number during a parallel block execution if you have more threads than the actual system can provide what will happen is that the each thread will be overloaded with some other extra threads uh, the extra threads job so here in this case there, there are eight threads and the, the total number of threads you have in the specified is 16 but there are actually only eight threads as a consequence each thread will have two threads job overloaded on the top they have one thread and one more threads job on the top so they have two jo threads job and as a consequence the numbers also kind of tend to change when that ha when that happens now this will this is not a pro this will not this will while well, this will definitely not give any speed up but this is useful for seeing if your program is scalable to other systems suppose if you if you want to put this and run this program in some other computer which has more threads okay and uh, in that case this kind of a uh, setting uh, this kind of an uh, experiment will make sh will give you uh, will show will tell you whether this will work or not simple as that now with that being said uh, this that's the last thing we are really talking about in this tutorial thank you guys for watching in the next tutorial we'll be talking about something interesting uh, and, and more and one more interesting application so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time